All right. So I uh, just quickly go over how I calculate the RSI relative strength index. Let me download the Dow Jones index data from Yahoo Finance first. Go to my page. Download this Python script. Right click, open in private window. Okay. Save file. And then it should be inside the download folder. It depends on where you store your file. So I get it get stock July 16. Let me close that. Open up sublime text. Okay. Control O to open the file. Get stock 2018 July 16. Load that up to sublime text. The first thing is to go check the data source. This one, the string is going to look up the stock that you're looking for, which is inside the search stock variable. So in this case, I'm going to get Dow Jones. You can look up for the stock symbol from Yahoo Finance. So basically what I'm going to do is just change the data source to D drive to folder data file. The location of the data source might be different. You have to change that according to your situation. So let me press control boy to load that up. It's going to take quite a while. So this time it works. So you see, I got data from July 19th. Let me see. Yeah, let me see. Get it close. Because what we need is just the open, high, low, close and volume. Okay. All these other stuff are just my calculation, like trend days. They change something like that. Usually I'll take a look at this one. The one that we just saved to. So let me see if our data is okay. So we got data for July 19. After we get the stock data from Yahoo, control N to create a new Python file. And let me go to tools, build system, and make sure it's running the, the virtual environment that has all the pandas, um, numpy, those packages. Okay. So I just save it as RSI test. I just name it as new RSI S and it's going to be a python.py. So save it. Okay. Let's start coding. Import all the libraries just like before, like import pandas. Oops. Pandas as pd. Import numpy as np. Import date time as pt. Okay. So first of all, I have to get something right, we have to locate a data source. It's going to be from D drive to data file and I think it's going to be XLSX. Sure if I spell it right. Oh no, it's DJI. Sorry, DJI. And I'm going to create a data frame, which is a table to read the data from the Excel file, which is the data source. I want my index to be the date. So index call equals date. Actually, the date is coming from here. Right? The date. And I don't need all the rest of the trade day, the trend sequence, something like that. I only want the open, high, low, close. So it's going to be low. And then get all the rows. Oh, actually, I don't specify this one first because I need the index. Sorry about that. So just leave it and I'm going to get from date all the way to close. So let's grab that. It's going to be inside. Sorry about that. And a square bracket and then include the date and close. So usually I will print that out. Print DF. I'll print the tail and print the head, the first and the last five rows to see whether we get what we want. Control boy to run it. I got the date and close. And this time I'm not going to use the date as the index because I'm just showing you how to calculate the RSI. Okay. So first of all, I'm going to define the RSI period that I'm going to roll over the data. So I just called it. 
RSI period. I just use 14 because we are going to get the 14 day moving average. So I just assign 14 days to the RSI period. Usually in real life code, you will use a function for that, like RSI function. But in this case, since I'm going to show you the process, I'm not going to use the function. Okay. So the first column that we need to do is to calculate the up and down between the trade dates. So this time I just assign new column called a change. Actually, I'm getting lazy. I'm not going to create an array for that. So it's going to be the close, which is the close price column dot diff one day. You can skip that one, but usually I'll put in the one just to remind myself how many days I'm going to get the difference. The up, I just call it gain. It's going to be the change dot mask. So I'm hiding those change that has a negative number. That means it's not a gain, it's a loss, right? So the change less than zero. For display purpose, I'm going to show you the gain. In real life, you don't create this column, okay? But I'm just showing you here. So E equals the gain, press control boy. So you will see gain here. So for the fourth day, the Dow Jones going up from 1277 from the third day. So it has a gain for 12. Let me do the same for loss. But this time, I'm hiding the change that has positive number. So the loss equals this one. Oh boy. And you see all the loss here, all the gain, all the loss. And then we need to calculate the moving average of the gain and the loss. Actually, this is the trickiest part in the RSI. There are three ways to calculate the RSI. I'm just using the exponential moving average. So I just call this one average gain. And the average gain is just the gain dot EWM. And I just do the mean. And let me sub in the parameters. First of all, I just put the mean periods. It's going to be equal to 14. Actually, I just put RSI period so that I don't need to change um, the main periods down the code. I simply change the RSI period on top. So usually I will do that. And the next one is a little bit tricky because from the pandas documentation, if the period is 14, so I set the com equals 14, then alpha equals 1 over 1 plus 14. But in my case, I want it to be 1 over 14. So I have to set the com to 14 minus 1, or you can set the span, which is 2 over 14 plus 1. Okay, let me see. I have an Excel to explain this one. Let me grab that. Let me go this way. So this one is like the simple moving average. If I want to calculate the moving average for the 15th day, I need to take the previous moving average times the period minus 1, which is 14 minus 1, which is 13, and then plus the gain back to the 13 times of the previous moving average, and then multiply that whole thing by the period, which is 14. All right. Basically, that is what it does on the moving average process. It's all done in a simple EWM function in pandas. I just set the com to RSI period, which is 14 minus 1, so that the alpha of this exponential moving average formula is going to be 1 over 1 plus 14 minus 1, which is 1 over 14. All right. That's how I get the RSI period minus one. Okay, then I copy that for the loss. And I simply change the loss, which is this one, right? The loss and everything stays the same. Usually you don't need to print out these two columns, but I'm just showing you here. Just give you a look at what it does. So this one is optional for display purpose only. So the average loss is just here. So control boy to print that out. 
for the first four days, you won't see the average gain because you need 14 days to process the data, right? So let's look at the end of the table. So we have the average gain and a negative number on the average loss because your loss is going to be a negative number. So next, I'm going to calculate something called the RS, the relative strength. So the relative strength is equal to absolute number of average gain divided by the absolute number of average loss. For simplicity, because you're taking the absolute value on both average gain and average loss, you only need to do it once, right? They give you the same result, okay? And the RSI is equal to 100 minus 100 of, okay. I put a bracket 100 over a bracket 1 plus RS. You can look up for the formula from Wikipedia or whatever. Just Google that. RSI. I better use Wikipedia. Okay. Just for copyright issue. So the RSI is going to be formula is like this. RSI equals 100 minus 100 divided by the 1 plus RS relative strength which is this one. And this time I'm going to show you the RSI. It's going to be equal to just RSI. So let me print out control boy to print out the RSI. So this time we got the RSI for the last few days. When it's above 70, the stock is considered overbought. And if the RSI is below 30, it's considered oversold. So to plot, the RSI simply import mat.lib.iplot plt. I just call it a figure equals plt dot figure. And then I'll create a subplot. Actually, you don't need a subplot, but I do get it like this. And I'm going to plot both the close and the RSI. Okay, so I need two rows, one column, and I'm going to plot the first one on top. So it's 211, and this one is the, I'll well, just give it a title. So this one is RSI, okay? Oh, actually, you know what? I have to specify the period first. I forgot. The graphing period is going to start. Day is going to be, I just call it 2018, January 1st, and I just plot it to the up to today, right? So dt daytime dt data daytime dot daytime, right? Dot today dot string time and it's going to be in the format of year, month and date. So the Y label is going to be I just don't want the rotation, so it's zero. The label is going to be, I just put an F, it's the, uh, let me see, RSI from start day to end day, right? The end day I just specify about, got mix up, I just call it, this one is the title. I don't need the rotation here, just got it. And the Y label is just the RSI, okay? So it should be ranging from, sorry, it's a text string RSI and I'm going to graph RSI just assign it to a variable graph RSI it's going to be df dot RSI sorry df dot load and then the row and column the row is going to be period sorry I forgot to define a period period is going to be two days right the first day is oh you know what I forgot to, okay, too bad. I have to change the index to date. Sorry about that. I have to reset the index. Uh, set index, and I'm going to assign a date to be the index so that your x axis will be the date and the uh, in place equals true. So the x axis that I'm going to print is the period and the period is going to be df dot index. Oh, you know what? I have to reset the index before so that the index can be the date. So more than or equal to the start day and df dot index is less than or equal to end date. And the column is the y axis is RSI, which is this column. Okay. And then usually I will put resample and this time I'm going to do it daily. 
you can change it to a free day average, five day average, or weekly, or yearly, or whatever. But this time I just do it one day. Dot plot. And let me plot dot show. Control B to run it. Hopefully it works. Oh, you know what? <laughs> because of daytime. Yeah, I have to change it this way. Control boy. Hopefully this time it works. Yeah. So it's only the RSI from period to the, the starting period to the end period, the end date. Actually, I shouldn't do 20 because our figure ends at 19. So I shouldn't do today. I should be changing it to 2018, 07, 19. Okay, and I can plot the graph for close. So this one is a close. DJI close and it's going to be plotting on the second row. This one is DJI from the same start and end date. The label is going to be DJI rotation equals zero. Okay, and this one I'm going to print the close column. It's this one close because so we are looking for the close. Everything stays the same and I'll put Dot dot type layout just to make it a little nicer and then I press control boy so as you see two graph but it's not very nice to I don't know why this one it has messed up this thing but we do have the Dow Jones for the period oh you see this one RSI with the rotation we have the DJI printed horizontally but we don't have the RSI Print it horizontally. Let me do it a little bit nicer by adding to the Y label one more attribute. Just put rotation equals zero. And don't bother to run that again. Hmm? How come? <laughs> Typo. To back. Rotation. Okay. And don't bother. I still don't understand why I got messed up with this thing. But we see the RSI is going to print horizontally this time. Okay, so that's pretty much it for a quick RSI calculation. Thank you. Bye-bye.